Hey folks, it's Pat here. Got a chapter 10 question, which is this guy right here, type 1 and type 2 errors. Um, this one, th this problem's a pain, and it's not because it's hard. Um, it's just because the wording on this is so tricky, you've got to be really careful, okay? So before you do this one, make sure you do the one on hypothesis test, null and alternative hypothesis test. Um, because that's what the first half of this problem is. You're just doing the exact same stuff that you were in the previous one. And then you have to determine um, which, you have to fill in these boxes here, all right, based upon which claims um, you can actually make. And so when you're doing a hypothesis testing or any kind of statistical test, there's two different types of errors you can make. So you have what's known as a type 1 error. Okay, and a type 1 error is when you reject the null hypothesis and, you know, support the alternative hypothesis, but the null hypothesis was actually true, okay? And then the second type, type 2 error, is when you don't reject the null hypothesis, but the alternate hypothesis actually was true, okay? So here's the way that I want you to remember this, and I know it's kind of a morbid example, but it's one my professors used a long time ago, and it works, <laughs> okay? So think of it like this. A type 1 error is I tell you 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 have cancer but you actually don't okay so yeah I mean it's not as bad right but you're still wrong okay and a type 2 error is I tell you you don't have cancer but you do so that one's bad <laughs> okay and so yes I get it it's kind of a morbid but I have some authority to speak on this but anyway I want you to think of it like that just so it kind of burns in your head all right so here we go um, let's just test this one out. So what are the null and alternative hypotheses that should be used for this test? And so you do have to read these. So just to make sure, manufacturers of an automobile manufacturing plant would like to examine the mean completion time. So mean, and notice that it already gives us mean here. Uh, the past data indicate the mean completion time is 42, but managers have reason to believe this value has increased. And so they think that it's increased. All right, so that's our alternative hypothesis because that's their claim. So they think that mu, mu is actually greater than um, 42 now. So 42, and these are all in drop downs. If it's not in the drop down, it's not right. So make sure it's in the drop down, okay? And so of course our alternate hypothesis is just covering all of our other bases, okay? And so that would be less than or equal to, okay? And then this one's always gonna be the same. These two are always gonna be the same right here, all right? So those are our hypotheses right there. In the context of this test, what is a type two error? So remember type two is when I, t when, when I reject the null, but the alternate is actually true. And so a type two error is um, failing to reject the null hypothesis, okay? And this is why you always do this part first here because a type two error is where you fail to reject your null hypothesis. This is your null hypothesis, so put that in exactly like it is. 42, when in fact mu is greater than 42, okay? So type two, remember, <laughs> I tell you, you don't have cancer, but you do, <laughs> right? And that's when I, I keep the null hypothesis, I fail to reject it, but it actually is um, greater than 42. The alternate would be true in this case, all right? And suppose that managers did not reject the null hypothesis. Whenever I don't reject the null hypothesis, I always have the um, chance of committing a type two error, okay? So this last one's a little bit easier. If, 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 you're, if you're rejecting the null hypothesis, you can always make a type one error. And if you're not rejecting the null hypothesis, you can always make a type two error. Write that down, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, here we go, let's give it a check. And we got that correct. Let's try one more here, all right? So I usually get like one or two of these wrong. And the cool thing about these is if you get something wrong, it's usually just the opposite of whatever you put in, okay? So anyway, here we go. Uh, personality test available on the World Wide Web uh, has a subsection designed to assess the honesty of the test taker. <laughs> After taking the test and seeing your score for this subsection, you're interested in the mean score among the general population. Website reports that mu, the mean is 145, but you believe that it's less than 145. So you believe that it's less than 145, so that's your alternate hypothesis. Is 145, and of course your null, or that's your alternate hypothesis, and of course your null hypothesis covers everything else. It's actually greater than or equal to 145. Okay, in the context of this test, what is a type 1 error? Type 1 error, remember we can commit a type 1 error whenever we reject the null hypothesis. And so that's rejecting the hypothesis that our mu is greater than or equal to 1, so our null right here greater than or equal to 145, when in fact mu actually is 
greater than or equal to 145 all right so remember I tell you you do have counts here but actually you don't <laughs> okay and so this one it looks a little repetitive and I know that's not very intuitive okay but that's actually true so it's saying a type 1 error is rejecting the null when in fact the null is true okay and then finally suppose that you decide not to reject the null hypothesis well whenever I fail to reject when I don't reject the null hypothesis I always have the possibility of telling you that you have cancer or you don't have cancer but you actually do <laughs> okay and so that's a type 2 answer uh, type 2 um, error okay there we go. Okay, I hope that's clear as mud. All right, so these are tricky. You have to read them very, very carefully. A piece of advice, just to wrap up here, always do this part first. And then if you're really jammed up on this one, skip to this one because you know that a type 1 error can occur when you reject a null. And a type 2 error can occur when you fail to reject a null. And so as long as you get all three of those punched in there, this one should make more sense. Okay, so this middle one here is the tricky one. So good luck with it. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you for more hypothesis testing in the near future. See ya.